Hi guys, welcome back to episode 2 of this series. Well then, let's get right into it. I found out I was pregnant again exactly one year after I lost my baby. And <laughs> it was really a mix of emotions. I was so freaking scared but so incredibly happy at the same time. My husband and I wasn't really, you know, actively like trying, trying. I didn't do the whole ovulation strip and things like that. We just, you know, go with the flow. And even so, at that time, we were all just getting our vaccines and all that. Actually, we even thought that we we should, you know, take some precautions because we thought that it wasn't a good time for us to get pregnant again anyways. But, you know, God has better plans for us. Yeah, I got pregnant. I was so scared that, of course, it was gonna happen again that I was going to lose this pregnancy as well um, but at the same time I was so so happy the void that I said I had was finally filled I feel like there's actually light at the end of the tunnel I don't let myself get too happy I remember being very cautious of letting myself feeling that I was so excited but at the same time terrified <laughs> we decided to tell our families first our immediate family so our parents and our siblings. I told my parents and my family, they were happy about it. Um, my dad didn't have the best response. <laughs> he was like, you should check again in a few weeks, you know, it could be a false positive or something like that. Which wasn't exactly the response that you would hope for when you've just gotten pregnant after losing a baby. But it's okay. Not everyone knows the right thing to say and I accepted that. And then we also told my in-laws, my husband told his family after that and I just... Right after we ended the call and um, I immediately felt a sense of regret. Regret of telling them about my pregnancy and I told my husband that I know this is weird. I know this sounds like really weird but I actually feel regret telling them about this pregnancy and um, <laughs> he also did not have the best response. He got defensive and said, why would you feel regret to, to say, of course they can know, of course they would like to know, it's nothing. You know? I mean, da -da 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 -da. I don't really know the exact words but suddenly I like broke into tears and I told him, I know it doesn't make any sense that I feel regret after telling them. I mean, they are our family. They deserve to know. And I know that what whatever that I'm feeling does not make sense, but that's how I feel. I said to him, like, I knew you wouldn't understand when I tell you this. And in that moment, I felt whenever my husband don't say the right things, which obviously not everyone knows what to say the right things all the time. Um... I feel very lonely because to me he's all that I have here. I don't have my sisters, I don't have my mom. I mean my best friends uh, are in Penang. Yeah, I. whenever he doesn't get me, I feel alone. Although technically we're in this together, <laughs> I feel like I am so alone in this. Anyways, he stopped and apologized, you know, after that, after I said that. I'm just telling you, like, what those, those are the, the moments and the things that I, I went through um, finding out that I was pregnant after having a loss. And then the crying began again. Almost every day, I cried. I cried because this pregnancy reminded me of my first pregnancy. And when I think about my first pregnancy, I think about what happened and how I lost it all. And we had to bury the baby. And it was, it was a hard time. And it's like every day I'm reliving it again. And I feel like I'm, I'm just counting down the days for that to happen again. I remember at seven weeks, I went to meet my good friend, Dr. Shaima. Because she has a clinic nearby, so I decided to just go there um, and have her do my ultrasound. Usually, um, ultrasounds uh, are best at 8 weeks and above. You can probably see the sac and the heartbeat better at that time. 
eight to ten weeks depending on the quality of the ultrasound machine itself she was able to confirm that i was pregnant there was a sack but she couldn't find the heartbeat to it we didn't really see much other than the sac being on my uterus she said it's still too early to know for sure of anything so just hang tight and come back at eight weeks it was so hard for me to just hang tight when you go for an ultrasound and you don't hear a heartbeat and then you know the your mind thinks of the worst already like oh my god you know it's just probably not gonna happen you know it's probably i'm gonna have a miscarriage again oh, this is not gonna turn out well blah 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 <sighs> this intrusive thoughts will come at you again and again and again i cry i cry there's a lot of crying but i cry every day until my next ultrasound, I think it was at about 8 weeks, I went to her again, um, 8 or 9 weeks or so. And Alhamdulillah, we really did see the small bean fetus and there was a heartbeat, a strong healthy heartbeat. So I was relieved but at the same time was very cautious of being too happy because I was not in the clear just yet because in last pregnancy they said after the first trimester you're in the clear but clearly they were wrong it happened to me anyways i went to her a couple more times i think at 11 weeks i went to her again she took some blood tests and all she saw that everything was fine and she told me that maybe last time it was just like a freak thing that happened and um it was just what's my recipe and maybe this time it would be much better i did not have any spotting or whatever during this pregnancy i had some on my uh, previous one but this one it was nothing i just had a lot of discharge more than usual but i thought that was pretty normal for someone who is pregnant i didn't uh, think of it much because i had a second trimester loss previously and my gynae before this told me that there's a good chance that I might have cervical insufficiency. So I remember reading a post on Dr. Imelda's page that someone in my Facebook page shared about this lady who had two second trimester losses and she went to Dr. Imelda and Dr. Imelda treated her and was able to bring her baby to full term and she had cervical insufficiency as well so I thought okay she would be the perfect doctor for me to go to um, this time down. I was so 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 worried about what's gonna happen to this pregnancy. Every time I think about this this baby, it kept on reminding me of my last baby and I keep on going into a loop that oh my god it's gonna happen again, it's gonna happen again, it's gonna happen again and every time before I went for an ultrasound I would cry and cry and cry out of fear, out of anxiety my mind would just go straight to the worst you know and i wouldn't let myself be happy at all i remember one time i think before i went for um, my appointment with dr imelda i remember i was just ironing my clothes um to go to the appointment i was just thinking oh my god i'm going to the appointment what's the doctor gonna say oh my god she's gonna say that you know my, ba my baby's not gonna make it blah 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 oh my god and everything's gonna happen again i always think of the worst and i always think that i was going to lose this baby and then i started to cry and cry while i'm ironing i'm like sobbing and sobbing i remember finding myself telling my baby that was in my womb. I stopped ironing, I sobbed and cried and I said to my baby, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm so sorry that I'm not able to love you <laughs> the way that I'm supposed to. Because I am so because every time I think of you I would think about your elder sibling. And I'm terrified that I'm going to lose you too. So I'm really sorry that I cannot love you. And I'm really sorry I don't know how to love you. And that whenever I think of you, I will always I will just think about your elder siblings. 
but if it is what was written for me that I was never meant to have you then you know I said to, I said to my baby that mama red door you just wait for me Just wait for me with your brother in in Jannah. Me and your dad. We'll see you one day. That's how much I feared losing this baby and this pregnancy. So I was about 12 to 13 weeks, I think, at that time. I wanted to go there before I stepped into second trimester. We managed to get an appointment. And on the appointment day itself, I met her. I said, hi, blah, blah, blah. She was nice. And when she looked at my, like, my book, she saw that I had... Uh, pregnancy loss at 17 weeks and she was like oh oh no you had a previous loss and at 17 weeks oh no that must be awful and the moment that she mentioned that to me um, I was like oh my god I'm gonna break down I'm gonna, gonna break down I'm gonna break down luckily we all had to wear masks so I feel like it was easier for me to hide my emotions um, I was like, yeah, it was really hard. So I want to know, I want to make sure that this one is okay. And then she was like, yeah, yeah, okay, let's let's have a look. So we did an ultrasound, and an abdominal scan. She did an abdominal scan and saw that, um, okay, the baby's healthy. She's looking fine. And then she said, okay, um, we'll have to do a transvaginal scan so that they can see it in a different angle and see some things better. So we did a transvaginal scan and as she was scanning, she felt quiet. For the longest time she's doing, I don't know what she was doing but she was doing, but she felt quiet for, for a few minutes. Which obviously is never a good sign, okay? So I was like, oh my god, what is wrong? And then um, after, after a while, she, she started to say, okay, never mind, let's, let's see, let's look at the baby and you see the brain or whatever, da, da, da. everything was good, everything's good. And then um, she's like, okay, done, you can, you know, uh, put on your pants again and like, um, why don't you sit down? And the moment she said, why don't you just sit down, I was like, oh my God. She probably, because she checked everything, she checked like my ovaries and everything and she thought she, she said everything was good. Um, and I was like, oh my god, she's going to tell me that I have cancer or something or she's found that, you know, there's something wrong and uh, I don't know, my mind just went to the worst, obviously. And I told her about, hey, I wanted you to check why I have so much discharge could you also check on that and she said no 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 it's okay just sit down i'll tell you all about it um here and i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god what she's gonna say so um she sat me down and then she showed me the diagram of the uterus and then showed me um basically she said that she checked and i only had 0 0.5 cm of closed cervix left which is <laughs> not much the fact that I have so much discharge is because that's actually uh, my mucus plug, the cervical discharge. That's what it is. My cervix is trying to compensate the fact that it cannot close tightly enough to hold the baby, that it produced this mucus plug, this discharge, uh, more and more of it to compensate for the fact that it can, it's not strong enough to hold the baby in. She said that I went to meet her just in time because if I didn't, um, the same thing might have happened again. I could have, you know, lost um, this baby as well. Um, 
So she said, we shouldn't waste a lot of time. It was a Friday. I remember it was a Friday. And she said, uh, can you just go back home? Uh, don't walk too much. And I will have to be admitted to the hospital on Sunday night because on Monday morning, I will have to go into the OT to have um, a cervical cerclage put onto me. So if you don't know what a cervical cerclage is, it's basically it's a thread of some sort that used to tie up your cervix so that your cervix stays closed until your baby is full term. When your baby is full term, they will open it up and then their baby can come out. So yeah, I had to get that done and she told me that, you know, you are having an emergency cerclage right now. It's not a preventative cerclage, it's an emergency cerclage because your baby is already hanging low and um, they have to stitch me up. It was a lot of information to take in, it, but it all suddenly makes sense that I had a lot of discharge. I also told her that I had like a lower back pain already. You know, people always get lower back pain when they're in their third trimester or so. But for me, first trimester, I already have lower back pain. Well, that's because my baby is already low-lying because my cervix was starting to open. So, um, yeah, we were admitted to the hospital. I went under GA. Dr. Imelda successfully put on the cerclage on my cervix and everything was great. The baby was doing great. Um, I got the cerclage and I thought that, okay, everything's good now, you know. Um, we found what the, 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 the issue. I was diagnosed with um, cervical insufficiency and we've done the 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 thing to manage it so i should be on the clear the baby is going fine um and i should be fine right because i was still considered a high risk patient i had to meet the doctor every two weeks and um every week i was prescribed a shot of progesterone every week without fail um until it's time for me to give birth that's just for uh, basically the hormone to to tell my body that I am pregnant so that my body do does not go into preterm labor. It was pretty uneventful for the next few weeks. I was still really, really cautious. Of course, I did not tell anyone. It was a need-to-know kind of basis about my pregnancy. Um, it's nothing personal or whatever, it's just my fear of losing the pregnancy, losing the baby was still very much there. It didn't really went away. So it continued on to be pretty much uneventful. Oh yeah, and, and by I think about 16 weeks, my doctor scanned and told me that we're having a girl. Um, we we're so happy. Uh, honestly, I didn't mind if it's a boy or a girl. I would have been happy either way. I just wanted my baby to be healthy. And I'm so glad that my husband was there for me for almost all of my appointments. So around 28 weeks or so. I'm almost at the end of the tunnel already or so I thought. I went to my regular appointment. I went in and the doctor said that my baby is on the small side but you know my husband and I were both small so it could just be that she's small but my doctor said that she has detected that my blood pressure on the umbilical cord is um there's a more scientific way of saying this but um I hope I'm saying it right in layman's term the doctor found out that the basically the blood pressure on the umbilical cord was a little bit high and um, that shows that there's some restriction. Uh, most likely it's some sort of uh, placental insufficiency. It's not something that I do. My blood pressure is fine. I don't have uh, gestational diabetes. Um, basically, I I was healthy. It's just that somehow my placenta was not doing its job well enough that um, 
the pressure, the blood pressure there is high and hence my uh, baby is not getting the nutrition that is needed for um, optimum growth basically. Uh, she's telling me all this and my on that day my husband wasn't there because he had to take a call out of all the days and I was again terrified, wanted to break down. Obviously, I thought that I was ready to start to be happy. At 28 weeks, we still had not buy anything for our baby because that's how afraid and cautious we are about bringing this baby um, safely. Yes, and she told me that in cases like this, usually we just have to prepare to bail the baby out because it would seem that the baby is won't be able to grow well while the baby is in me. But the doctor said um, we will just continue to monitor closely and uh, see how well she progresses week to week. And she says as long as there is positive growth and the flow, the, the, the blood pressure flow the umbilical blood pressure thingy doesn't get too high or even goes in reverse. The amniotic fluid is also still, the level is still good, then I can continue to keep her inside me. She says to me, I don't think you will make it to 37 weeks because the plan, my birth plan was that at 37 weeks, we would have my cerclage, my cervical cerclage out and I would be induced to give birth. But she said that she doesn't think that I will make it to even 37 weeks. She said she will just work on trying to get me to at least 32 weeks. So I was terrified. I was only about 28 weeks. So that's like 32 weeks is just four weeks away. But four weeks can feel like a lifetime, okay? She said, okay, uh, next week, your next appointment, um, we're gonna have to get you uh, injected with steroids to mature the baby's lungs in case of emergency that we have to take the baby out. So you know how terrifying when you hear that? My baby was barely like one point something kilograms. Like so, she was so small. She was barely one kilogram at that time, I think. And after that, I just, you know, tried to put on a straight face. Um, I went out of the clinic. I went to see my husband and um, I had to tell tell him everything, right? But before I could even tell him, I went to him. He was sat somewhere at the hospital where there's like sofas. And I just went to him and I said, the doctor just gave me some news. And then I just started to cry and cry and cry. Of course, he panicked. He... Um, took leave, emergency leave after that and, and she said, what happened, what happened, what happened and I told him um, everything that the doctor said that you know the, 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 she is expected to have IUGR, um, intrauterine, intrauterine growth restriction, I think so that's what it is and um, you know, she might have to come out early and we have to prepare she, and, you know, have to go to an ICU and things like that. And blah, 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 blah. And I was like crying, crying, crying. And again, my husband don't always have the best response. She said, it's okay, don't cry. Ini bukan rezeki kita. I was like, why would you say that? She's not dead. She's still alive. She's still here. We're still gonna fight for her and bring her to life safely. And she's like, no, betul lah. Nah, no, you cannot say that, okay? And then, um, yeah, I was terrified. I came home, I crying. I didn't know how to tell my parents as well. Um, because I knew that if I spoke to my parents, I would cry. So I messaged my parents because they are very involved. I every time after my each of my appointments, I would tell them what the doctor said. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah, if you don't know, my parents are doctors as well. So I confide in them in all of my um, medical stuff. I told my mom through text because I said I'm sorry I I can't talk to you because. I will just end up crying so I want to tell you that the doctor said that you know the, the baby is not going well blah 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 da, 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 might have to come out early 
and then my mom just said it's okay you know everything is okay we'll just continue to do R so at that point I had no choice but to do R because the doctor said there was nothing that I could do to remedy the situation um, I will just have to do the wait and see method <laughs> And as long as there's growth and the amniotic fluid was still okay and the blood flow was still okay, then I could still keep her in. My appointments became more frequent from every two weeks to every one week to twice a week because we really had to monitor closely. But I made it week by week by week until it was 32 weeks and then the doctor said, okay, good, everything is still looking okay. But during one of the weeks, um, my amniotic fluid was looking a little low so the doctor was really worried as well and I was also really wor worried as well but she told me to just um, make sure you know count the kicks of your baby and see if if ever her kicks starts to get less uh, you know go to the hospital again I was terrified scared every day all I do is just cry and do all to Allah please you know let me be able to give birth to my baby safely like please 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 i know that no one else could in the whole wide world could help me except for allah so i had to learn to really really tawakal to allah knowing that only he can help me and no matter what i do or interference or whatever the doctor said or whatever at the end of the day if he so wills it to happen, it will happen. You feel so helpless, you know, because you're put in a position where there's nothing that, you know, I cannot like eat something, something to make things better or whatever. I cannot. It's it's just something that happens and we'll just have to wait and see. So we can read past after the 32 weeks. Um, doctor said, okay, good. She's still growing. We'll still wait. Um, at about, at my 33, 34 weeks appointment, the doctor said, Okay, your baby is about 2 kg right now. Um, I think we should bail her out. She wanted me to have my baby on a Monday, I remembered. But I said, you know, my baby, she will turn 35 weeks on Wednesday. So can I have the baby on like Wednesday or even Friday? Then she would have been 35 weeks. I know the difference is only a few days. But I think I told her... I. To me, I think a few days would make a big difference. My doctor said, okay, fine. Um, you just come back on Tuesday and um, we'll see how it goes. My appointment was on Friday. And so I thought, okay, I'm planning to give birth next week. I have another week. I only started to buy things for my baby at 32 weeks. Imagine that we did not buy anything at all for the baby because we were so focused on just getting the baby out safely that we did not buy anything. <laughs> also, we really didn't want to jinx it. We were both really scared to be hopeful, you know, even if it was already the third trimester. So at 32 weeks, I decided, okay, I should buy some stuff for my baby. So I bought some clothes and just some basic stuff um, for my baby and I remember I knew that that was a good chance that I was going to have a preemie so I already bought all the preemie clothes um, knowing that my baby would probably be small and I remember looking at the tiny clothes and crying thinking that oh my god you know I've made it here to being able to almost see or feel the babies in my arms just seeing the tiny, tiny baby shirt there in front of me. I teared up just, just thinking about it. I remember texting Kalida and telling her that. Friday was my appointment. I wanted to give birth on next Friday. My doctor suggested that I give birth on Monday. Turns out on Sunday. Instead, Sunday at like 4.30am, I was asleep. And I... I felt a pop. I don't know how to explain it. I felt a pop. And the first thing that came into my mind was, could it be that my water broke? I wasn't sure. I tried to move around. I sat down. I felt a gush of water coming out. And I was like, oh no, this feels like my water did break. I walked to the toilet um, in the dark and then I turned on the lights and then, you know, I took my panties off 
and true enough i was dripping water it was like a clear water with a, a little bit of pinkish uh, tint to it and from all that i read that is definitely the amniotic fluid coming out Oh my god, my water broke! My water broke! So I guess I should be in labor now. I woke my husband up. Alright, there's so much more that I want to tell you guys, but I will save it for the birthing video. So I'll see you guys on the next one.